Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Spring 2024 online section of Safety 41, which is called Analysis and Design, but I like to call it Senior Design, because that's really what we're doing. As you can see on the screen here, I've got a picture, or not a picture, I actually have the our Canvas site. Uh, if you haven't already been there, please do so. I will be posting new lecture videos uh, by sun on every Sunday. That's the plan. So then you have uh, Monday to get in the previous week's work. All all work is due by Monday night at midnight. I, I decided to shift it by a day, just based on uh, experiences. And I'm going to hold really strong on deadlines this semester, and I'll be talking about that in a little bit. If you haven't already, please use this link to go to the pre-semester survey. It is a bit longer. Uh, there's a reason for that, and it come it's basically because of the uh, personal professional development plan that we're going to be using as uh, one of the assignments, semester long assignments. Uh, once you've completed, it, I'll give you I'll go ahead and click on this, and I know some of you have already done it, so I got to give you the point. Please get that done uh, by Wednesday at the very latest. Hopefully you're listening to this before Wednesday. Uh, other things that are here, I've got a. Here's the, here's the syllabus, and I'll be kind of going over elements of it, but please read it through. It's got all the requirements. We'll be talking about internships, specifically the capstone internship. So I've got the agreement here. I've got the handout that goes to capstone interns for developing case studies, and I've got information about the, um, the binder that you'll be developing, a case study example, and then um, some advice. I'll be going over that later, not today. I've got some information for LinkedIn. Uh, this course, we will be using LinkedIn every week. I'm hoping to develop some good habits that will expand your professional network and identify opportunities for you. I would like everybody to join the American Society of Safety Professionals as a student member. It's about $15 a year. And if you stick with it, um, your first year after graduation, it's free. The second year after graduation, you get 50% off. And after that, hopefully you have an employer who pays for it. You get out of it what you put into it, and I've gotten a lot more. Actually, I've gotten a lot more out of it than I put into it, and I put in a lot. So definitely at your age, uh, your point of your career, it puts you, it's a, it's a great advantage. It'll get you further than you would if you didn't have it. I want everybody to read through. One of the assignments is I want you to read through all of these documents Kind of summarize what is what needs to be done for the capstone internship. There are three forms that need to be filled out. Um, yeah, and then also registering for graduation. Um, this is all stuff that I provide in this class every semester, and every student seems to forget about it. So one of the assignment elements is to summarize this so you know what's going on. And then we've got week one. Here's everything. Uh, so this is where this video is going to be located. I've got the agenda, which I'll show you in a moment. A demo video from um, a, form, a student from last semester who can show you how to use EndNote to keep all of your notes and resources for the class. It's a great thing because then when we meet virtually, you can kind of open it up and show me stuff or send me a link. It's kind of cool, actually. She did it. Here is a practice video from the end of last semester. And what's interesting is we ran through the final project for this class several times. This is one of the main ones right before the final presentation. Unfortunately, I didn't get to record the final presentation because we did a live at the site. Here's links to join American Society of Safety Professionals as a student member, again, $15 a year. The next is a free membership with NSC, but it's a different organization. And then I'll show you what's required for your problem solving problems this week. Every week I'll have some form of problem solving. And then uh, the assignment for the personal and professional development plan of which when we have our one-on-one -on -one this week, you got to let me know when, uh, we'll talk about it. And then this is where you submit everything. It'll be more than one document likely. So let's get to the course overview. But before I do that, I just want to show you that each week I will be creating and providing an agenda. I'm, I'm trying to transition from like a classroom where it's like, oh, this stuff, to in the real world. Here's the agenda. You know, this is what we're going to talk about this week. This is what the assignments are. This this is what the assigned readings and work is. <laughs> is that the right term? And then this is the work you have to submit. So you can go and check these things off as you get them done. I don't know why that was highlighted. Oh, because it shouldn't be like that, should it? Oh, well, whatever. 
I'll save the work. So each one of the, each week I'll have one of these. You can then refer to it. It could become part of your, you know, how you're tracking things, how you're scheduling out your work. All right. So let's go ahead. I hate when it does that. We'll swap it. And we'll go through kind of the overview for the class. Again, this is just week one. Um, career prep and professional development. Um, it used to be a small part of the course. Now it is probably 50% of the course. This is this was an intent. It was intended to be so because we've been getting feedback from the people who both uh, supervise the capstone internships, the summer internships, and those that hire our students. And so it's, it's something that's lacking. And I'm actually going to try to figure it out this semester and give you all, uh, you know, it's, it's to benefit you. So for this course, I am making it a professional development training course. Uh, this is an unofficial term that I'm going to try to expand out to other degrees in the college. But in speaking with my colleagues, I'm not going to wait for somebody to tell me to do it. I'm going to do it first and then bring them the data. So I'll be collecting a lot of data this semester from this class. There is a course attendance policy course when you're online. I can't see if you're there or not, but your assignments will. Each assignment each week will draw from what we talk about or what I cover during these recorded lectures. So please watch them from start to finish and make sure you're taking notes because you're going to have to submit that stuff. And believe me, I have ways of figuring that out. For pre-semester, again, go ahead and take the survey. It is a little, little bit longer. Be honest. Fill everything out, please. Do that by Wednesday. Um, I'll give you the point when I see it's been uploaded. And the thing is, I don't get notifications. So maybe once a day, I'll go check it out. So don't freak out if you don't get the point right away. And then you need to email me uh, to set up a time for a one-on-one. -on -one. It'll take 20 minutes, maybe 20 to 30 minutes, depending. And we're going to kind of go over the personal and professional development plan and what I'd like you to do. I'm going to try. I'm going to push you guys to really, um, you know, think really deeply about wh what you can work on now in order to reach goals that come up in six months, two years, five years, things like that. If you fail to, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Oh, I think I said it right that time. Um, I could take a good look at a T-bone by sticking my head up a bull's ass, but I think I'd rather take the butcher's word for it. Name that, name that movie if you can. So as far as this is for the A and D stuff, I've got the syllabus for this class and then some of the other things. I had already pointed that out. But for the big thing is all of these documents should be, you should look at them because you're going to need them either now or you're going to need them in the future. This is the information about the capstone internship and applying for graduation. Make sure you read all this stuff and know what to do. Um, I'm not going to read them for you, but if it comes up and I'll bring it up during our, our one-on-ones, I want to make sure that you're understanding what you have to fill out, when you need to fill it out, who the key individuals are that you need to talk to in the, in the uh, department. I want you guys signing up. It's only 15 bucks, but I will be referring to some of the publications that we get through American Society of Safety Professionals. I get like a weekly student um, email. I get a leader email, I think every two weeks. And then I get the professional safety journal each month. So we'll talk about that stuff as we go. Again, it's it's a you know continual learning, continuous learning thing for your careers. We will be making a lot of use of LinkedIn. So if you haven't already, buckle up we're going to be using it a lot. Here's some basic references that you can use if you haven't put any time in. This semester, I'm going to be doing this with you. I am going to develop my own personal professional development plan. I'm going to be working on my LinkedIn profile and expanding it. Um, these are all things that uh, I, I think I'm ready to kind of you know get myself out there more for other opportunities, connections, things like that. Same as you all. So we'll be working on this together. Uh, so this is an updated, my profile, it hasn't changed in a long time and I need to do that. My analytics have dipped a little bit, but I am up about 125, 130 followers since uh, last September. So I'm getting about 30 a month right now. But if I post more original content and get out there, I can get my impressions up quite a bit. And I'm going to add more description language, other things to my profile so that I come up on more searches. So I only came up on 85 searches last week. I'd like to come up on a lot more last 90 days. So I'm only getting about two views a day. I'd like to double kind of everything here. Followers, that's tough. That's people who want to come to me. But I do have 3,200 people who see everything I post, everything I like. 
you can find a lot of information about jobs um, on here. And so we'll be using Handshake, we'll be using LinkedIn, we'll be using Indeed primarily, but you can use other things too to find opportunities and report on them. Um, I, this was from during the fall. There's still a lot that's posted here. And, th and then I'm also going to show you how to do research. So um, I'll talk about it in a little bit, but I'm trying to get out of my second job. Um, and I had to participate in the interviews for an individual. And I found a lot of information about him on LinkedIn. So when I was interviewing him, he was his comment was, wow, you really do your homework. It's like, yeah, we all should, right? And then Indeed, here's some other things. So between Indeed and, and LinkedIn, you can, you can usually find most of the opportunities in whatever area you want because you can specify where and what. Next week, we have Frank Lanko. He's going to be doing um, our guest presentation. He is the head recruiter, head of uh, career services for Kobe. And uh, he's going to talk about Handshake, LinkedIn, resumes, preparing for interviews, preparing for the fairs. It's a great thing, and he's a great supporter of our degree and our students. So he gives a lot of great information. He was a recruiter in a past career. Uh, this semester, if you're doing a good job, I will invite you to submit information for a student spotlight that I will post on LinkedIn, and that will definitely increase your contacts and followers. This is one from Jake uh, Burford. Uh, he graduated last spring. And he's working for the state of Wisconsin hygiene lab now. And these are the different backgrounds I had created. You get to pick it and you just give me your information and it's all good. So I actually still have to post a few from last semester. Kind of hit us pretty hard, but um, yeah, you'll see that too. And also then when you're all connected with me, and hopefully that's by the end of this week, that as I'm posting and commenting that you guys can come in behind and kind of like comment as well. It'll be one way that you guys can kind of uh, ride my coattails in order to start developing your networks. Uh, artificial intelligence software apps and websites are prohibited for this course. I want all the work to be yours. But if you find that maybe there's an easier way to do something, talk to me first before you submit it. May, I'm willing to listen to what you have to say and, and, and learn from you if this is something you're comfortable with. But at this point in time, at the get-go, prohibited. I did make some substantial changes to how this class uh, is scored or graded. The course binder used to be a really big part, but I know that students were kind of whipping it together at the last minute. And so what I did is I created this personal and professional development plan. So there'll be weekly reports. I'll be meeting with you one-on-one -on -one throughout the semester as well. It's 25% of the grade. I may be upping that the next time I teach this course, depending on how much time it takes us. But this is a very important aspect. And it goes hand-in-hand -hand with analysis and design. It's like analysis and, analysis and design of your career, <laughs> if you will. And then you'll do two case studies. And we'll be covering that extensively so you know exactly what I expect. The weekly assignments... Um, that's the stuff that I'd shown you before what you have to get done and then there'll be a final presentation So all compact all good. Here's the schedule This is what we're doing this week next week is career services and Frank and adding to LinkedIn uh, Getting more into what ASSP is um, Did I put BCSP up there if I didn't I may have to do that or where are they? Maybe it's a little bit later in the semester. Oh, I hope I didn't forget them. I may have to augment this a little bit uh, we'll start getting into some other things like the binders and case studies and mentors. Oh, that's right. I'll be ma matching all of you up with three different mentors and with current capstone interns. Uh, I want you to learn from people who are out there. Maybe you can help them out too. Uh, I, I want everybody to go to the internship fair. So go ahead and mark it down. It's uh, Wednesday, March 6th. So even if you're out working, if you're within like an hour's drive time, I'd really, really appreciate it if you could attend that. Otherwise, I'd want you to try to take advantage of the online options. David Vosberg is our department coordinator for it. And maybe what I'll do is I'll bring him on to talk about it a little bit if you cannot make it. And I'll be talking to you about it during our one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, after the fair, we're close to the break. We'll talk about case studies and topics. Um, I can either provide them or you can generate them based on where you're working right now. But we'll talk about that. Yeah. So as far as the, again, the weekly agenda, we're covering this stuff here now. Uh, I'm, in a moment, I'm going to talk about what we did last semester and some of the work I've been doing uh, in my part-time job. 
I, uh, here's the video um, that Colleen... No, Colleen made this video. What's this one? Um, oh, yeah, the practice video. You can watch the practice video that the students and I made last year. Again, if you're going to give a very important presentation, why wouldn't you practice it three to three to four times and improve it each time? The final result is always better. And by the way, it was awesome. We practiced it. They did a great job. And they memorized everything. It was great. Uh, so read through the content that's available right now on Canvas. And then the things you need to do. Complete the survey. Meet with me. Um, summarize what's required for the capstone internship and graduation. Uh, join ASSP. Join National Safety Council. Provide a copy of your resume. Uh, upload a screenshot of your LinkedIn profile. And if you, haven't, if you don't have one, start it and then send it. Uh, perform the analysis. Uh, I'll show you the homework in a second, the, the problem solving in a second, and then work on your personal professional development plan, which is smart goal setting. And you and I will work on that together during our call. So we have five, 10 things you're going to be doing this week and reporting on. And where do you put it? Put it all under this week one assignment folder. So you should be able to upload multiple documents. If you haven't ever done that, I could get you help. Here's the problem solving. I got two problems. Kind of goes in line as we're thinking about, you know, you're getting close to graduation. This one over here on the left, um, this student doesn't have the 2.5 minimum GPA in order to do their internship. So they have to retake a course or two in the spring of 2024. I want you to pick out some courses, do the calculations on what they would need to take and then what they would need to get in that class in order to get their GPA to a minimum cumulative 2.5. They're really, really close. Okay. The other problem is I've got is it's five different questions. This is a grade book. We've got five different students here, and here's the breakdown of the coursework. Here's the weighted percent, and then the points awarded to each of the individual assignments, adding up to 100 percent. They haven't taken the final exam yet. I want you to calculate what they need to get as a, for a score on the final exam in order to achieve these minimum numbers. Just use those numbers right there. Okay. How do we do that? Figure it out. I want you, you're going to be doing some problem solving, uh, sort of free falling problem solving, figure it out. Um, and I, I've got a lot of them that I've had to do at work here that people are like, oh yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's how I'd figure it out too. I didn't think about that. So go ahead and figure these out. Oh, we will, geez, my, my roller is going crazy. We will have additional opportunities as we go through some off the top of my head. Friday the 26th, you could volunteer to help out the Wisconsin uh, chapter of ASSP. They're doing some food sorting. I wish I could make it, but I have something on Friday. So you can go and sign up at their website. Uh, on the 8th of thir Thursday, February 8th, this will be a virtual presentation starting at 9 in the morning. And that sign up is coming out probably tomorrow on Monday. And a friend of mine, Jill James, is going to be doing a presentation. She's done like 111 episodes of the Accidental Safety Pro over the last five years. She's going to talk about some of the highlights and talk to some people. So that'll be kind of cool. Hopefully you guys can make that. Uh, Frank will talk about this next week, but he's got a whole page talking about career fair preparation. Look, all this really cool stuff. I would go if I were you. There is the Wisconsin Safety Council Conference, which will be held April 15th to the 17th at the Kalahari. I'm going to try and get a student rate um, with them. I believe I'm speaking at this twice. Yeah, I'm speaking two different sessions. I think both on um, Tuesday and Wednesday. I have a session with Jill, actually. And then I'm, I'm working right now with Jason Coons to do a leadership and communication session. He had done one a couple of years ago. Um, he's going to do it virtually. And I'm hoping we can get that scheduled for sometime early February. Um, we'll try to do it like on a Wednesday afternoon to better support our online students, the ones who work all day. But great speaker, great guy. He's a mentor of mine. At the end of the syllabus, I do have a little discussion about myself. So I'm just going to... Be honest and let you know that for the past, well, for all of 2023 and currently, I'm the EHS manager for April Air, April Air's Madison plant. Uh, it's So I've been a really, really busy over the last year, but I've learned so much about the practice of safety. It did very much align with what I, what I teach in my 483 class, but um, I, I learned a few things. I picked up a few stuff. And so... As we go through the semester, I'll be sharing. I'm going to try to reflect and review all of my stuff. I really hope that we hire someone 
and I can um, kind of sunset that opportunity. Um, I will stay during a transition period to make sure that whoever they hire is 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 well equipped to take over. Um, but for right now, yeah, I'm still yeah, it's still a lot of work. So let's take a look at um, what should we start with. Let's start with I'm going to give you guys kind of an idea. I'm hoping this is working here and that we're not having two things open. I'm going to close that. I'm going to close you. Okay. So this is my this was my December sort of year end summary at April Air. So I'm going to talk I'm going to try to talk quite a bit about just some daily things that I do. Um again I'm part-time. This is a full-time job. I've been doing it part-time, but basically skating by by the hair of my chinny chin chin. So this is my year total 2023. Every month I report out to on the management team on what I've been doing and what the numbers look like. And then on a quarterly basis to corporate, the big brass. Um, this is this is very different than what I came into. Uh, the situation I came into, the, the former uh, safety manager left abruptly and didn't have anything prepared. And actually he had a specialist working underneath him. So they had two people. Um, the specialist was let go. Not two weeks later, he stepped away for health reasons. I shouldn't say he. They stepped away for health reasons. And then they got me. So um, I changed things quite a bit. So two things that I really added as being an important leading metric would be safety observations and concerns and then actions completed. Safety observations and concerns prior to me coming in. Um, sorry, the microphone. I didn't realize it was so close to my face. Prior to me coming in was all um, whatever got uploaded by supervisors. I wanted to expand it out to the workers. And so I, this is a combination of both uh, formal and informal reports, which I think are really important. And then these things resolved are just making sure I check things off. Yeah, and I, I should have done a better job of monthly review to focus on certain things. But again, when you're there part time um, and you're getting a lot of reports from workers when you get out on the floor, it's tough to keep up. So it is a full time job. Two people were doing it before. Now they just have me. Training got set to the wayside during my year simply because they were behind on production, one. Um, and I'll talk about the, uh, the economics of it, but I, I picked my shots. Um, they probably got more. It was There's a lot of informal training that went on and a lot of work reminders that were set out. Um, but as far as formal, I only, only got four formal trainings and they were really cut short. They were during uh, shift transition meetings and it was it yeah, I can do better I put the audits and JHAs on hold so that I could go around and get to know people and listen to them and I think I got a lot more done by focusing on that than if I had stuck to the traditional OSHA approach to things I did a worker survey which I think is essential to any program and got great results. You know, we I didn't meet my four out of five, but that was kind of a pipe dream to hit that five. That's an 80% on the climate scores. I got a 3.7 average, but first shift was a 4.0. Um, so one of my shifts gave me good input. The other two are a little bit upset, but they already knew. Management knew. I just kind of narrowed it down to a few um, topics. And then as far as the lagging metrics, I took last year's and took a 20% reduction. That was my goal. Ended the year with um, eight recordables, four of them being, actually one was lost time, three were restricted. First aid cases did increase, but I wanted to hear about them. And so I put it as a goal. I mean, you don't want first aid cases, but you want to hear about them. So I wanted an increase. So that was a weird one. I did my old ratio thing. So safety observations to lost time cases and first aid cases to lost time cases. As you can see up here, my no loss time to loss time, if you have me in 483, is one to one, which is not great, not good, but average. And by showing these other things, what I'm showing is people are reporting. Nobody hid an injury. Okay? Everything that should have been recorded was recorded because it was reported. And I put some pretty high expectations, a 20 to one and a 10 to one, easily made it. What am I, 100 to one there and about 15 to one? Yeah, so doing good. And my incidence rates, I wanna keep it below nine and six. I got six and three for my total case and my dart. I just looked up the BLS comparison 
and it's uh, 3.6 and 2.3. So I'm above the BLS, but if you've had me in 43, you know that I don't put any weight to what uh, BLS has. Lots of issues there, but almost a 50%, well, over 50% drop for the lost time. So the severe cases, almost 50% total. Every month I generated this summary report. It does look like an OSHA 300 in many ways, but more importantly, I have my responses on here. So what I did, it has a much more description of what happened and what we did, and everything is broken down. This is better than the 300. You guys know, you guys know me. I would definitely do it that way. Here's my comparison of OSHA recordable stuff from 2018 to my year. So I came in in 2023. As you can see, in the last two years, I was able I was able to pull first aid cases and near miss and report only from previous work. Here's mine. If you can see the no last time, last time is this is the first year we hit the one to one. That was one of the first things I said I wanted to try to achieve. Um, so the numbers they look good. They re look really good for a part time guy. And then so 50% reduction in total case incidents rate, 64% of DART. Uh, these are severity rates that they kept prior to me. What I'm trying to demonstrate to them is, here's what you asked me to report. What did we learn? What value was I able to draw from reporting this on a monthly basis? How much insight did it give you? And so it's, it sounds like I'm being snarky, kind of am. But so they're like, yeah, we really want this stuff. And I'm like, why? This doesn't do any good. Here's a secondary comparison. Here's my OSHA recordables. Here's the causes. My OSHA recordables only represented 6.7% of, you know, investiga investiga investi investigatory, is that a word? Of the things I would learn about. Instead, by having these other first aid, report only, near miss, that accounted for, again, about 93.3% of all of my investigations and insights into the workplace. Here's my Pareto ratios, where it occurs, what caused it. Much better information here than right there. This is all they have. This is what I was using. And so here's a comparison of what the, my predecessors did. Again, two full-time people here. Um, items reported, items corrected. I increased it by 250% and 150%. There are things still on the list that need to get fixed. Again, this is a little bit old, but it's pretty much here. This, this jump in February to March, this is how I was able to achieve those reductions. I brought in students in the fall to help me with a few programs and I'll be sharing some of the results here and actually I could take it another step further. So we did lockout, takeout, electrical safety. I just submitted the updated training version to the director of operation, no, director of engineering. He's gonna review it and get back to me and then we're gonna train all of the authorized workers and then we'll do the affected after that. Uh, this an ongoing issue with PIT, which is forklifts of course, and manual material handling, which we have some walk behinds, is that we've been using Train the Trainer and Crown to do the training, and we haven't, but my my trainers haven't been using the website to track things. So I got to implement a change there, and I'm working on it. Emergency response planning and training, trying to get CentOS to come in and update that for me. Initially, they said yes, then they said wait, and now they're saying yes again. So then that can get done. I've been working with Fair Graham to update their environmental management plan. We don't have a lot of stuff. We're a very small quantity generator, but I'm gonna make some recommendations on a few things, a few engineering controls we can put in place that I think would even reduce it in half, in half. Pretty cool stuff. And the containers need to be updated. Uh, the auditing and JHA system that they had before was really useless. Um, They're spending a lot of time doing things that weren't helping. So I kind of revisited it. Um, I want to make customized forms, but I want it to look beyond just the, the physical visual hazards and into worker concerns. And I think my year long journey has done that. I did some full shift sampling for noise. It was actually below 85 decibels, so they wouldn't even need a hearing conservation program. Um, but I think I'm gonna try to do an updated one um, to see, again, to double check that. And then maybe what we can do is sunset the hearing conservation program, the audiometric testing and all the costs involved with it. I, I submitted um, particulate matter um, to the Wisconsin Hygiene Lab. 
about 10 days ago. I need to find out what the testing is, but the workers are being exposed to fiberglass during a pleating operation. And so I'm trying to find out what the exposure is. I do have a temporary HEPA um, air circulation um, unit set up adjacent to it to try to capture it. And it is capturing. I actually, it's been running for a couple months and I just ordered a new HEPA filter for it. A lot of it gets caught on the pre-filter and I've been cleaning it and I've been tracking the uh, manometer, but um, it's getting, it's full. And then I may do some VOC monitoring, but that's one thing I think I'm gonna run out of time on. And then these were some additional things. Uh, I've done a lot of ventilation work, a big study on heat stress last summer. Hascom's very simple, but it should be formalized. Um, and there's some few other things here too. And I'm gonna try and finish up this corporate program before I leave. I'm using all of my data as a justification to provide not only justification, but context and scope of what we need to be working on. Here's a summary from one of the projects for the hearing conservation. You can see that there are some spike level noises. It's impact noise. It's impact noise from our cutters or slitters and our staplers. If we can put those away, you can see all the staplers are really high. I think they could get rid of their hearing conservation program. So I'm asking them, begging them, please try using some noise absorbing material to at least use as a backer for this equipment. And if you can lower it from like a 101 or you know, that's where it's really high, a 101. If that gets down below 90, I really don't think you, they're going to need a hearing conservation program. So here's some other things I was working on in December and people I'm working with. And the, I mean, on a monthly basis, I need to tell them how I'm progressing on these types of things. Most importantly, my calendar year 2023 work comp total incurred Again, so here's total paid, here's total incurred. We'll see if that gets paid out. As you can see, much, much, much lower, and even compared to the other plant. So my my sister plant, brother plant, whatever you want to call it, their total incurred is 341. They're current, currently at 122. They're slightly larger, probably by about a third. Uh, but you can see here the numbers show my, my work comp stuff is very much doing very well, doing very well. I mean, that can change overnight, of course but I'm actively managing these claims. And so it's a good thing. Yeah. So the last thing I wanted to go over with you all is what we worked on in this course last semester, other than the April air stuff. So we did this enormous, never done a project like this before. It really threw a wrench into what I typically do in this course. We won't be doing, we might, we might be touching on this this semester, um, but I'll definitely want to bring in um, Eric to talk to you all. Great resource. Oh, what happened? Try that again. Hit that, hit that, swap. So this was the presentation we actually used in front of corporate um, after we had practiced it. And I want you to watch the practice video. That was like the second run. And so we had the justification. So we were working with transportation warehousing. So Johnson Health Tech, they, they build and sell home exercise and commercial exercise equipment. They have workers who um, pick up equipment ordered, um, put it on the truck, bring it to the site, assemble it, and carry it in. And there's a lot of injuries that goes with that. As you can see, Transportation Warehouse is one of the leading causes of um, injury and illness. So the scope was, it's heavy stuff, it's awkward stuff. They, do, they, they basically just manually like muscle it in. Not a good way to go. I mean, you'll see here in a moment how much it's cost them. And, and there, there was a lot, there were a lot, it seemed like every time we came up with a new idea, there was a new thing to prevent it from working. So here are some of the, the initial um, restrictions. Keep it under $1,000 per solution. Need to reduce the risk of injury and damage and also make it adaptable and space saving. If we can't do those things, it'll be immediately rejected. We watched videos on how they'd pick it up from the warehouse, put it in the truck, bring it out, you know, either assemble it on the truck or bring it down and then how they bring it in. And you can see here, we just kind of took a look at the, the spine and their hands. Th those alone are risk factors. And usually they don't have a three person team either. This guy was kind of the eyes and the pre lift planning and things like that. These other two dudes did all the work for work comp in 2020. Um, they had, a, a you know, 19 in 2019, they had 17. It's gone down quite a bit but they've been expensive. You can see right here, they had, you know, 550,000, 550 million 
right? Or 550,000, sorry, geez. 550,000 in claims. Claims are usually down here, you know, in the like 20 to 30 range, but still something needs to be done because at any point, again, overnight, they could have a really bad one. This is a breakdown by numbers of entries by type of claim. We talked about that. We use the DMAIC method, which is what Eric wanted us to use. It is a Six Sigma quality improvement approach. And so students got to actually learn about it and then apply it. These were all the steps we took to try and find solutions. Started with just basic online stuff like you would. We called like 30 some movers, you know, and installers to find out what they're using. We did an actual, we did biomechanics. We did actual lab testing where we tried out different equipment that Eric purchased for us. And then we interviewed a couple ergonomics experts. Here's all the ideas we tried, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah. The interviews with the movers basically said, yeah, they just, nobody had a solution. So that was interesting. Here's our students kind of playing around. Eric's provided a couple of um, different devices. One was a, uh, what do they call this? A, um, uh, starts with an R, a something, I'll think of it later. Um, but then also a treadmill. Oh, I forget what this is. Elliptical. It doesn't start with an R. It's elliptical. Super heavy, about 440 pounds. The treadmill was probably only about like 120. So that made it, it seemed really easy after you did all this stuff. So we did analyses. Um, you guys know this kind of stuff. FMEA, JHA, NASH, lifting equation. Uh, we tried different types of straps. We tried gloves and lifting straps or deadlift straps. We tried two different types of... Um, Dollies, oh, by the way, we really thought the dollies would be the solution, not. We tried a glider and look how it wore through it after just a few minutes of testing. We interviewed a uh, professor from Milwaukee. This guy was just, oh man, he gave us so much information. He's actually the one who gave us the ideas for what we created. And then Dr. Tavera also provided us some support. So we designed this uh, lifting platform. Because what they said is if, if the lifter can go straight up and down instead of being pulled forward and putting their back in an awkward position, um, it would be better for the lifter. And so we, we, I built this and we tested it out. And man, amazing. We also attached gliders to the bottom. It made it so that it wouldn't bust through. It worked awesome. One person could actually move it on gliders. Okay, go ahead. Oh, there's just the, the computer. I mean, they're barely pushing. The okay, idea go is ahead. Get people to stop. Um, lifting, it would be better. I think this one is also, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Okay. You see, they're lifting straight up and down and they could go up the step. Look at their hands are free. Look, they can use their hands to control it. So cool. All right. So, um, yeah, can try to give it a name. We are attempting to collaborate this semester with UW Platteville. They have engineering labs that maybe they could actually fabricate a real lifting platform made out of aluminum and have all kinds of bells and whistles that we wanted. But we just tried to test it with two by fours, obviously heavy. I think the whole thing was 30 pounds, the lifting device. With aluminum, it could be a heck of a lot less. So we made other recommendations such as collecting data, testing in the field. Could you redesign your equipment? <laughs> And then here's the group. I think they did a fantastic job, um, but it did take almost all semester to get to this point. And I believe there are some articles out there on the work they had done. It was like done in like December or whatever. So that was all of that. Um, it kind of gave you an idea of what we did last semester. We're not gonna do that again, most definitely, but I'll be working with you all on professional development, um, getting ready for career transition. Um, and just overall, kind of just giving you a chance to try things. And if it doesn't work out, you know, it's, it's, it's a learning experience. I believe very strongly in the um, Socratic method. And though, so that's what this is all about. And so please complete the uh, survey real quick. I'm going to post those grades in a second. And um, reach out to me so we can make our appointment because I need to talk to you guys and kind of go through some exercises to figure out what your goals are going to be, how you might meet it. And then I can answer any other questions you have about the course. Thank you very much. I look forward to working with all of you over the next 15 weeks.